Here we go. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to give it like 30 seconds for people to come in and then I'll get uh, get us started. Okay, I think that's 30 seconds. Oh, there's 20 people here, how exciting. All right, everybody, welcome to the webinar. So glad you're here. Um, today, we are delighted to have um, Professor May from NMSU, one of our very own, uh, Professor Cliggett might join us a little bit later, and Dr. Whitley um, to share information about the EPSCoR Research Fellows Program. All three of our speakers are rock stars and they're here to help you submit a successful proposal. And we are extremely grateful uh, that they're able to join us today. Before we get started though, uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, my name is Brittany Vandor. I'm the Communication and Outreach Manager at New Mexico EPSCoR. And EPSCoR is part of the larger NSF EPSCoR ecosystem, which has a mission to enhance the research competitiveness of targeted jurisdictions like New Mexico. I'll be your host for today's webinar, along with my partner in webinar hosting Prime, Ms. Selena Keneally, who will be working behind the scenes um, to make sure everything runs smoothly. Uh, our webinar will be about an hour long today. If you have questions at any point, please type them into the Q&A box and our presenters will take them at the end of their presentation. And finally, a recording of this webinar will be available on our YouTube channel. Um, or our website, you can get to it there as well, which is www.numxnmfscore.org. Okay, now the point we've all been waiting on, let me introduce our speakers. We have um, Professor May is a Luke Berry Shrines endowed professor in the Department of Chemical and Materials Engineering at New Mexico State University. She received her PhD degree in chemical engineering from Tulane University and then worked at Los Alamos National Laboratory before joining NMSU in the fall of 2009. Her group researches, her group research focuses on extaxial, epitaxial, oh man, oxide and nitrate film, nitrate thin films and nanomaterials for lithium ion batteries and electrocatalysts for fuel cell and other electrolyzers. In 2023, she joined NSF as a rotating program director in the NSF EPSCoR program and is currently serving as co-lead for the EPSCoR Research Fellows Competition. Dr. Whitley is also here today um, and she's the NSF EPSCoR program director. She currently manages a $107 million portfolio of 26 standard grants and cooperative agreements and focuses on building basic science research infrastructure and promoting economic development and broadening participation in STEM. She is also, if that wasn't enough, a molecular biologist and her research of DNA repair and DNA signaling pathways offers insights towards the molecular biology and neuroscience, immunology and cancer biology. She earned her PhD in pathology at the University of Chicago. Um, our third presenter or who may join us today is Professor Cliggett. She is also an NSF EPSCoR program director and is a professor in anthropology and a former department chair at the University of Kentucky. She received her PhD from Indiana University in Anthropology and held a Mellon postdoctoral fellowship in population studies at the University of Pennsylvania before joining the University of Kentucky in 1999. She is a co-lead uh, for the EPSCoR Research Fellows Competition. All right, with that introduction, uh, ladies, please take it away. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and let you do your thing. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My colleagues and I are offering this webinar to the EPSCO Research Fellows Opportunity. EPSCO stands for Established Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. 
EBSCO Research Fellows is one of the four research infrastructure improvement strategies in the NSF EBSCO. Go to the next slide. During this webinar, my colleagues and I will provide an overview of the NSF EBSCO program, the EBSCO Research Fellows Funding Opportunity, an overview of successful proposal contents and the requirements, as well as the merit review criteria by which proposal will be evaluated. We encourage you to ask any questions you may have at the end of the talk today. Uh, next slide, Chichi. The primary goal for today's webinar is to inform the community about the EBSCO Research Fellows funding opportunity that supports PIs from EBSCO eligible institutions in the development of research collaborations. The most recent solicitation, NSF 24528, was released on January 22nd, 2024. This opportunity provides up to $300,000 over two years. And the deadline for this year cycle is April 8, 2025. You can find the solicitation using the web address below. Please also know that while this webinar will discuss many aspects of the solicitation, please read the solicitation in its entirety. It's very important to read the whole solicitation. Next slide, please. The NSF EBSCO program is a congressionally mandated program. It originated in 1978 with a mission to build research capacity and advance the capability of eligible jurisdictions to conduct competitive research. Currently, five federal agencies have EBSCO programs, including NSF, DOE, DOD, uh, NASA, NIH, and the USDA. All EBSCO programs share the same mission, but each agency has different focused goals. At NSF, EBSCO advances geographic diversity in STEM through catalyzing research capability across and among targeted jurisdictions, establishing STEM professional development pathways, broadening participation of a variety of groups and institutions in STEM, effective engagement in STEM at national and global levels. In order to accomplish EBSCO mission and goals, EBSCO's investment strategies seek to build capacity. And as a result of this investment, positive impact the economic development of EBSCO jurisdictions. Next slide. The term EBSCO jurisdiction refers to states, commonwealths, and the U.S. territories that are eligible for funding from the NSF EBSCO program. Jurisdictions are eligible for funding if their most recent five-year level of total NSF funding is equal to or less than 0.75% of the total NSF budget. This eligibility, uh, eligibility is monitored annually and is available in the website. The Chips and, S, the Chips and the Science Act of 2022 effectively frees NSF EBSCO jurisdiction eligibility through fiscal year 2027. Currently, there are 28 EBSCO eligible jurisdictions. The institutions within these jurisdictions that are eligible for the EBSCO Research Fellow Program. Next slide. The EBSCO Research Fellows Program arose in discussion with the broader EBSCO community. And during these discussions, the NSF EBSCO recognized an opportunity to catalyze the career trajectories of the next generation of research leaders. This is a single PI proposal for company and mid-career investigators including tenure track or tenured assistant or social professors, non-tenured research assistant professors, or research social professors. The EBSCO Research Fellows provide opportunity 
for the PIs to further develop their individual research potential through extended visits to other private, federal, or academic institutions within the United States. This opportunity will provide fellows and the ability to learn new techniques to benefit from access to state-of-the-art equipment and facilities in the host site, strengthening collaborative partnerships, and shift or extend their research toward transformative directions. This opportunity amounted to providing time for fellows to develop new research directions or expand the current research direction and to provide a pathway for strengthening research connections with partner, partners. The fellowship provided experience that will benefit and positively impact the PI's career in years to come. In alignment with EPS commission, fellowship outcomes are also expected to enhance the research capacity of the PI's home institution and our jurisdiction. Next slide. Under this solicitation, there are two tracks, EBSCO Research Fellow, NSF, and EBSCO Research Fellow at NASA. For the EBSCO Research Fellow, NSF track, the host site may be any research institutions, including universities in EBSCO or non-EBSCO state, uh, national labs, or NASA research centers within the United States or its territories. Also, any topic that NSF funds is eligible for this program. Next slide, please. For the EBSCO Research Fellows at the NASA subtract, the host sites are specific NASA research centers. In addition, there are specific institution types that are eligible. This include minority serving institutions, two-year colleges, institutions primarily serving students with disabilities, women's colleges, and primary undergraduate in institutions. I would like to emphasize that in the proposal for both tracks, you need to have a very strong justification why you need this whole site, why you choose this collaborator, the collaborators' expertise area should be different from your expertise area, your exact travel timeline, and the specific research tasks that you are going to do in the whole site with the collaborator. How will this fellowship experience impact your career and benefit to your home institution and our jurisdiction? Next slide, please. Uh, we will share with you some strategy to fund the collaborator with the NASA research centers. So the PIs interested in this opportunity can collaborate with NASA subject matter experts for the duration of the award. The subject matter expert, expert will serve as a research collaborator, a technical monitor, and will have support from NASA to conduct extended collaborative visits with the PIs. So NASA EBSCO supports matching faculty with collaboration, collaborators in both NSF EBSCO research fellows, if you choose NASA Center as a host site, and also NSF EBSCO fellow at NASA subtrack. So the topics have received uh, like over 200 focus areas to try to match research investigators to work on research of important priority to NASA. So any PIs interested in this, you are required to spend one to six months over two years period with NASA scientists and our engineers. For NASA research centers, some research centers require PIs to be U.S. citizen. Some research centers require at least a novel permanent resident. Next slide, please. To fund a collaborator at a NASA research center, 
please send your resume, contact information, and research interest to the NASA EBSCO coordinator using the email here. The NASA EBSCO coordinator will assist in identifying a NASA collaborator, arrange a meeting, and a facilitate a collaboration. The NASA EBSCO coordinator will provide a letter for the proposed submission. This is a required letter. In some cases, PIs may have prior research collaboration with NASA scientists or engineers. You should share this information with the EBSCO coordinator to proceed with the proposed submission. For additional information on potential research project, please go to the link. This link is also in the solicitation. Please start early to increase your success of being matched with a NASA scientist or engineers. If you have any questions, please contact the NASA EBSCO coordinator. Go to the next slide. We will share with you some of the budget request. So this, the, the maximum budget is $300,000. And the award duration is up to two years. So if you want to just budget for one year, that is fine. Um, also remember, this is a two years award duration is intended to provide flexibility in planning fellowship logistics. And PIs can spread one to six months of work over two years, but Remember, this is not a two-year research project. And the research, top, research task should focus primarily on the fellowship period of one to six months in the host site. The budget request may include one to six months of salary and a fringe benefit to support the PI and the one additional trainee level participant the one additional trainee level participant can be undergraduate, graduate, postdoc, or research staff. Up to six months of support can be applied per person, not per year. The support may be for academic semesters or summer months. If you buy it for tuition, insurance for students, you can, so it may be included if it's appropriate. The budget request for travel expenses for the PI and the trainee level participant are no longer kept. So you can budget the multiple trips between the home institution and the host site. While feasible, PIs are expected to budget for lodging arrangement in a manner consistent with extended visits Remember, you need to follow your institution's travel policy. So we strongly encourage you to talk to your school, understand your school's travel policy when you do the budget for travel expenses. Also note that no sub-award, no salary can be requested for the whole site personnel. But up to $10,000, requested for the collaborator to travel to visit you in the home institution or go to conferences while the collaborative work is presented. For the EBSCO research fellows at NASA, applicants may request a research infrastructure development award up to 60,000 from NASA EBSCO. So you do not include this request in budget to NSF in the proposal. But after the, the NSF award is issued, the NSF EBSCO office will manage this additional CCTK to you. To be eligible, an applicant must have their primary employment at any EBSCO jurisdiction. Funding from this program is not transferred to another fellow. If a PI takes a position in an institution that is not within EBSCO jurisdiction, the fellowship award will be terminated. So if you know you are going to move, please send us an email. P 
PIs must be in eligible status by the proposal deadline. If you have been notified that you will be promoted to full professor effective in August or September 2025, you are still eligible to submit this EBSCO Research Fellows in April 2025 because your status will change after the proposal deadline. So you still be eligible. Thank you. I go to the next slide for the letter requirement. Please provide all letters as a supplementary documents with your proposal submission. Regarding letters for our research fellow NSF track, required to have three letters, one from home institution, uh, generally from like your department head, or Dean. The second letter will be from your collaborator. The third letter from your whole site and administrative letter. If you choose the NASA Center as a whole site, the NASA EPSO coordinator will provide this letter. And for the NASA track, so you can see from this table clearly show two letters are required. One from home institution, one from NASA EBSCO coordinator. Uh, if the institution is a primarily undergraduate institution, you will need additional letter from the home institution. So uh, I will, will not show detailed the letter content here. But please read the solicitation. It has all the letter content requirements for each letter. Additional letters from other parties may be submitted only if they are needed to verify specific tangible commitment that are related to the research activities that you describe in the proposal. If these letters do not meet this standard, we will ask PI to remove letter from the proposal package. Now I will invite Dr. Whitney to continue the webinar. Thank you. All right, thanks Dr. May. For this opportunity, successful proposals will present exciting, vibrant fellowship ideas that will positively impact and potentially transform a PI's individual career trajectory. More broadly, it is expected that the fellowship will impact the research field, institution, and or home jurisdiction of the PI. All proposals should include the motivation and research context for the research to be conducted, well-defined, well-reasoned, and well-organized research objectives that are driven by specific research questions or hypotheses and specific plans for the fellowship period. They should also include a discussion of how the benefits gained from the fellowship can be sustained beyond the funding period with a clear description of fellowship goals, performance metrics, and a timetable of activities. Successful proposals will explain how or why the award will advance the PI's research program. For example, how the fellowship provide opportunities to the PI that would otherwise be unavailable? And what are the partner uh, parameters for the partnership? Successful proposals also describe how activities could lead to long lasting impacts for both the PI's career and the PI's home, institution, or jurisdiction. The plan should focus primarily on the fellowship period. Now let's discuss the criteria for the merit review of proposals. All NSF proposals are evaluated through the use of two National Science Board approved merit review criteria. These criteria include intellectual merit and broader impacts. Both criterion are to be given full consideration during the review and decision-making processes, and each criterion is necessary, but neither by itself is sufficient. When evaluating NSF proposals, 
reviewers are going to be asking when they look at your proposal, the following items to consider. They will want to know what the proposers are trying to do, why do they want to do it, how do they plan to do it, and how will they know if they succeed, as well as what benefits could, could accrue if the project is successful. These issues apply to both the technical aspects of the proposal and the way in which the project may make broader contributions. To that end, when reviewers have your proposal in hand, they'll be asked to evaluate all proposals against the criteria of intellectual merit, which encompasses the potential to advance knowledge, and the criteria of broader impacts, which encompasses the potential to benefit society and contribute to the achievement of specific desired societal outcomes. For each of these criteria, the following elements should be considered as part of the review process. For both criteria, what is the potential for the proposed activity to advance knowledge and understanding in its own field or across different fields and to benefit society or advance desired societal outcomes? For both criteria, to what extent do the proposed activities ex suggest and explore creative, original, or potentially transformative concepts? For both criteria, is the plan for carrying out the proposed activities well-reasoned, well-organized, and based on a sound rationale? And does the plan incorporate a mechanism to assess success? For both criteria, how well qualified is the individual team or organization to conduct the proposed activities? And for both criteria, are there adequate resources available to the PI either at the home organization or through collaboration to carry out the proposed activities. For this program, additional solicitation specific criteria will be included to highlight specific objectives for the program. So when, when reviewers have your proposal in hand, we will ask them to evaluate your proposal according to the following questions. What evidence is presented to demonstrate the proposed research outcomes can be achieved within the constraints of the fellowship period with the work being performed primarily at the host site? How will the fellowship have a transformative impact on the trajectory of the PI's research career goals during and after the funding period? How will the fellowship yield tangible benefits to the home institution and or jurisdiction that's beyond the individual benefits to the PI? What evidence is there that the home institution and the host site are each committing the necessary resources to lend confidence that the fellowship will be successful in achieving its intended outcomes? Okay, so I know we've said a lot thus far, but if you have additional questions regarding proposal submissions, you're welcome to contact myself, my colleagues, especially Dr. Wu and Cliggett. Uh, and for the EBSCO Research Fellows at NASA, please also remember to reach out to our colleague, NASA EBSCO, via the contact information on the slide. PIs are also encouraged to attend outreach events such as office hours that will be taking place in the coming three to four months. And there we'll be able to answer your questions one-on-one. -on -one. Please consult the EBSCO program website to register for these sessions. And when they're ready, we will send an announcement out to the community so that uh, PIs can uh, register. I'll end with next steps for PIs interested in submitting a proposal to this opportunity. First, consult with your sponsored research office regarding internal competitions required to submit proposals because there's a number of proposals that can be submitted per institution. Next, identify a collaborator at a host site or a NASA center. 
And this is regardless of track, right? Uh, for EBSCO Research Fellows at NASA, review the focus areas to find alignment with available opportunities and contact the NASA EBSCO coordinator. Of course, write the proposal narrative as early as you can and obtain letters of support early into the process. And you can contact us at NSF or at NASA regarding questions. Submit your proposal through research.gov well, well, well before the deadline of April 8th, 2025. And if you're not planning to submit a proposal in this cycle and are interested in reviewing for this opportunity, we welcome you to send your CV to an NSF program officer using our contact information, and you'll be asked to complete a reviewer survey, survey in advance of the deadline. Thank you so much for the time to listen, and we look forward to answering your questions. Thank you so much, um, Dr. May and Dr. Whitley. I see that we have Dr. Cliggett here with us now. Welcome.